About a hundred years ago, geologists started admitting that Lyle's ages were not on a sound footing, even though they'd become widely accepted as true. There was circular reasoning. Fossils were dated by the rocks, and the rocks were dated by the fossils. And there was growing evidence for catastrophic events in the past, which made nonsense of Lyle's uniformity principle. But without Lyle's uniformity principle, there was no way of deducing any ages at all. There was a very well-known geologist, Arthur Holmes, whose books I read when I was studying geology many years ago. He decided to put the time scale on a firm footing with radiometric dating. He found it much more difficult than he had expected. The classic radiometric dating system starts with uranium. Uranium breaks down through many stages of nuclear decay until it becomes a stable kind of lead. Radiometric dating computes the amount of parent element, in this case uranium, and the amount of daughter element, in this case lead. You assume there was no daughter element in the rock to begin with, and you work out how long it would have taken to get that much daughter element, assuming nothing moved in or out, and of course, assuming everything was always happening just as it does today. Holmes expected he would get accurate and consistent dates, but, as Henry Fall noted, Uranium and lead both migrate in geologic time, and detailed analyses have shown that useful ages cannot be obtained with them. Widely divergent ages can be measured on samples from the same spot. You chip off one bit of rock, and it gives you one age. You chip off another bit of that same rock, and it gives you a completely different age. It's very much the same with the other popular dating methods. For quite a long time, strontium rubidium devotees claimed that it was much more consistent than potassium argon or uranium lead or the other methods. But it usually disagreed substantially from the others and the devotees of the other methods agreed it was more consistent, but probably more consistently wrong. There was an opportunity to test the methods a few years ago. A lava flow had been poured out in an eruption on the island of Hawaii, a well-documented historical event. Radio dating experiments had rock of precisely known age to test their methods on. It was known to have been poured out 100 years before they arrived to date it. According to potassium argon, the time since the eruption ranged from 60 million years to 160 million years. Uranium lead said it was 4,000 million years since the lava was poured out. That reminds me of Robert Gentry's statement at the Louisiana State University meeting. If isotope ratios are to be used as a basis for geologic dating, then presently accepted ages may be too high by a factor of 10,000. The Hawaii dates were wrong by factors ranging from 600,000 to 40 million. Well, the radiometric dating experts had to look elsewhere for comfort. They ended up doing what the radiocarbon daters did, making a catalogue of dates from items from known places with known ages and using them to adjust their measurements. Certain items, particularly zircon crystals, are used to date other zircon crystals from the same sort of place, just as the radiocarbon daters do. But there's one huge difference. Carbon-14 has many items with historically verified ages to base the calibration on. Apart from lava poured out at historically verified dates, geology only has Lyle stories. Radiometric dating does not give ages anywhere near 100 years for 100-year-old rocks, so the calibration is done only against Lyle's stories. 
They now claim to have an independent and trustworthy dating method. But all their calibrations are done on the assumption that Lyle's time scale was correct. So they're calibrating radiometric dating against rock and fossil dates, and that leaves rock and fossils as the independent standard. The truth remains, as stated by O.H. Schindewolf, the only chronometric scale applicable in geologic history for the stratigraphic classification of rocks and for dating geologic events exactly is furnished by the fossils. Owing to the irreversibility of evolution, they offer an unambiguous timescale for relative age determinations and for worldwide correlation of rocks. Geological dating and evolution remain inextricably linked. Not surprising, since Lyle and Darwin worked together in attempting to discredit the Bible. The geology textbook, A Trip Through Time, has this to say about Lyle. Lyle launched a crusade to lay to rest once and for all the idea that the earth and all things on it were the product of divine creation. Many geologists have been eagerly carrying on this crusade ever since. Dorsey Hager, for example, said, Early geologists fought to free people from the myths of biblical creation. Many millions still live in mental bondage controlled by ignorant ranters who accept the Bible as the last word in science. It's interesting that secular science largely ignores religion in general. They don't seem to be crusading to discredit the Vedas, the Koran, the Tapitaka, or any other supposedly sacred text, only the Bible. And as Richard Bothath said, if Jesus was not the Redeemer who died for our sins, and this is what evolution means, then Christianity is nothing. Secular humanists are not trying to discredit Krishna, or Vishnu, or Muhammad, or Confucius, or Buddha. It's only the truth which is anathema to the lie. And the weapons being wielded in the crusade against God's truth include Darwin's evolution and Lyle's millions of years. But we can be confident they will not succeed. We read in Isaiah 55 verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. God's word does not support Lyle's extravagant time scale. Let's take another look into that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, Please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.